the Kansas City Ballet has brought its version of the Nutcracker to the Kennedy Center. Brett Pruitt and East Market Studios The Christmas party that unfolds in the Kansas City Ballet's Nutcracker is quite sweet, but it's the after-party, aka the battle scene, that really kicks things up a notch. That's when the Mouse King rolls on stage astride a giant sardine can, like a furry, humpback Napoleon. His minions go to war armed with spoons, fountain pens and cheese balls, and then, because this is a particularly satisfying fantasy, it's all cleaned up. Every crumb by the time the cannon fire clears, the victorious toy soldiers have compelled the surviving rodents, at sword point, to sweep the stage. This handsome production, which opened Wednesday night at the Kennedy Center Opera House and continues through Sunday, positively oozes charm. A prologue introduces us to the toy maker Dr. Dross M. Iyer, struggling to gift trap his misbehaving dolls. Reindeer prance through the kingdom of the snow in white booties and pert satin skirts. A hot air balloon wafts young Clara, our heroine with the overactive dream life, from scene to scene. Dross M. Iyer, however, needs no clever conveyance. At one point, he simply flies away, zooming above the stage, his black cape billowing. This little-traveled company from the Midwest is an unusual choice for the Kennedy Center's annual Nutcracker runs, but it's easy to see why it won over the programmers. Artistic director Devon Carney's version of the Holiday Ballet, created just two years ago, is especially lovely with its bright, fresh decor. The eye stays busy taking in the storybook sets and props by French painter Alan Weiss and Carey designed Victorian costumes by the veteran Holly Hines. The exquisite snow scene is a standout in the Kansas City Troops Nutcracker. Brett Pruitt and East Market Studios Kansas City Ballet Music Director Ramona Pansagrau conducted the Kennedy Center Opera House Orchestra in the Tchaikovsky score. With 36 company members and apprentices, this troupe is smaller than the typical opera house guest, and at times during the second act divertissements, the stage looked a bit bare. Its second company, KCB2, plus trainees and local dance students, helped fill out the production. This is a solidly traditional account of the familiar story, with a formal Christmas Eve gathering leading into a child's reverie of sweets and playthings. There is no complicated psychology in play here. Kearney's choreography is clear and elegant, tending toward restraint and classical purity. The exquisite snow scene was a major showpiece. You couldn't ask for a more transporting winter storm, amid frost-coated trees in bluish light, with the snowflakes in silvery blue gowns and icicle crowns whirling in ever-shifting patterns. It is all light, swift and magical. Among the many standout performers, Maggie Christ as Clara deserves special mention. Christ is an enchanting actor and dancer, and I felt quite a pang at her moment of shock when the lively Alexander Santiago, as Clara's brother Fritz, tore her nutcracker doll's head off. The hardest-working performers of all were the members of the second company and its trainees. A close read of the program revealed that some of the ladies in those ranks were not merely double or triple cast but danced for roles parents in the party scene and the moms wear point shoes here, which isnt the norm, making their party exertions that much more difficult, plus snowflakes, French shepherds and flowers. I imagine them staggering to the ice bucket after the bows, though really there should be champagne in that bucket, and toasts delivered in honor of these true heroes of the holiday. Launch. The Nutcracker by the Kansas City Ballet, at the Kennedy Center Opera House, 130 and 730 p.m., through Sunday, $59, $175. 2,024,674,600 at kennedycenter.org.